What is going on guys? My name is Hussein and Node.js, if you don't know, releases security updates every month for Node.js, the software. And uh, they find critical vulnerabilities and they publish them and they, of course, patch the software. So I like to make these videos. I've been doing it for almost like three months now and uh, go through these vulnerabilities to raise awareness, obviously, for people who use Node.js as a publicly exposed uh, software for people to connect to. Usually we discuss that it's not really a good idea because Node.js is just, it's, it's to me, yeah, it's been there for a long time, but it's in, in its infancy when it comes to publicly facing proxies or web server, right? We always put it in the back end and we put, uh, battle-tested sort of, uh, servers, uh, things like Nginx or HAProxy, right, on top of these things, things that have been seen the battles and all this stuff, right? Node.js is like a Swiss army enough. You can do so much with it. That's why it's dangerous. That's why people don't say, uh, they say, don't put it on the front end, but some, sometimes you don't have a solution. So that's why Node.js get, keep getting better. So, so that's the first reason. I'd like to, hey, go ahead and update your Node.js instance so you have the latest and greatest. So the second reason is for us engineers to become better and learn from other people's essentially mistakes, right? And extract lessons. And we love lessons. And boy, there are some lessons here. Let's jump into it. So the first uh, vulnerabilities that have been discovered is HTTP2 unknown protocol caused denial of servers by resource exhaustion. It's a critical CVE. So it's been published and known. So let's read through this and explain. Affected Node.js versions are vulnerable to denial of service attacks. Most of this stuff that we see and we, for the last three months is always denial of service attacks. And it's not necessarily when I say denial of service attack, like, oh, like a fleet of people connecting to Node.js and bringing it down. This could be a single stinking attacker that can bring the whole server down by exploiting, by essentially forcing the server to crash. Just finding a way for the server to crash is a DNS because, hey, if I find a path that I can crash you, me alone, I can crash you every time <laughs> I send a request. That's a disaster, right? That's another form of denial of ser uh, service attacks. And I talked about the, uh, denial of service attacks right here. Guys. When too many connection attempt and unknown protocol are established, this leads to leak of file descriptors. If a file descriptor limit is configured on the system, then the server is unable to accept new connections and prevent the process also from opening. Example, a file. If no file descriptor limit is configured, then this leads to an excessive amount of memory usage and cause the system to run out of memory, which eventually will crash, right? So what is that? They didn't explain more, but here's my guess. When you establish a TCP connection and then follow it up with a TLS. There is an extension called ALPN, Application Layer Protocol Negotiation, that tells the server, hey, server, what's up? I'd like, here's all the protocol that I support. I support HTTP 1 and I support HTTP 2 as well. And here are the versions. So if you can do a malicious TLS hello and provide an unknown HTTP2 protocol, just put an unknown protocol in there, in the ALPM, then Node.js will exercise that path. And since I believe it's written in C, I'm not sure, there is essentially that path is not being released. The memory, the pointer is not being released. As a result, you the, even that you close the connection afterward because the server will say, hey, unknown protocol, close. But that path, right, that code path will not release that pointer. As a result, the file descriptor, which is that connection, will be treated to be unused. And as a result, that's a leak. Leaks are bad. All right, so that's the first one. Very interesting, right? The second one is a DNS rebinding. Let's read that one. So this one is interesting. I've seen attacks like this back in early 2000s. <laughs> but this one is interesting. Let's read from this. Affected Node.js versions are vulnerable to DNS rebinding attack when the whitelist includes local host 6, which is, if you don't know, guys, local host, uh, local host 6, local host 4, and uh, there is like a lot of variation that all point to the loopback. Local host 6 point to the IP 
V6 uh, loop, loop back, right? So these are just variation. It says when localhost 6 is not present in ETC host for some reason, now you might argue what caused it to not be present. That's another situation, which is uh, I'm, confused, I'm confused about that a little bit. When localhost 6 is not present in the host file, it is just an ordinary domain that is resolved via DNS. So if, if you made a localhost 6, if you have application, which a lot of application uses localhost 6, or most probably localhost, right? If that entry is not there, then the DNS, the operating system will treat it just another domain. So it will make a DNS query searching for localhost. So if someone, if you're using a plain text DNS, which most people today uses, unless the, until DNA, DNS over HTTPS comes to uh, fruition, then that local, ho local host entry can be, can be intercepted by anyone in the middle, right? And they can reply with an IP address that is shady, and as a result, hijack you, right? So that's the problem here. If the attacker controls the vi victim's DNS server or can spoof its responses, the DNS rebinding protection can be bypassed by using the local host 6 domain. As long as the attacker uses localhost 6 domain, they can still apply the attack described in 0-2008-7160. So that's another vulnerability. So that was an interesting one. So how did they solve it? Do they hard code localhost 6 as a loopback? I guess. They don't rely on the ETC. I think that's the solution. They didn't specify what's the solution, essentially. And I like, I like that they thank the people who reported this, Vit Sestak, thank you. And the final one is an OpenSSL one. OpenSSL, integer overflow and cipher update. <laughs> they didn't bother explaining it, so they had, you know what, <laughs> here's a link. <laughs> so let's go through this. It's, 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 not, a, it's not really, a, uh, it's not really hard to understand. This, is, this one is easy to understand. The OpenSSL public API function x05 issuer and serial hash attempts to create a unique hash value based on the issuer and the serial number data contained within the certificate. However, it fails to correctly handle any errors that may occur while parsing the issuer field which might occur if the issuer field is maliciously constructed. This may subsequently result in a null pointer derough and crash leading to the potential denial of service. So, it's clear. So if I constructed, uh, if I constructed a bad certificate with a shady issuer field, I, ha I put like a large string that is an integer, Okay. And then, essentially, what happened here is the OpenSSL will try to parse it and store it into an integer, and that integer, whether it's 32-bit, I'm assuming, right, that will overflow. So it's whatever the maximum 2 billion something, right, that's the, that's the maximum integer. So if you put a number that is maliciously put, so it's exceeded that number, then you will result in a, essentially a non-pointer that will result in an overflow that will result in a crash. A crash is all bad, right? So Node.js fixed that essentially. And uh, I, I want to end this video by saying that the more features you add, the more vulnerable you become. It's very simple equation. Look at all this stuff. You support DNS queries, Good, because now that you support a package that does a DNS query, you have to deal with all these bugs and all these security holes that DNS brings with it, right? You support TLS, you have to deal with OpenSSL bugs, and you have to deal with all that stuff, right? Uh, so so it, is, it is really, really interesting. The more features you have, the, the essentially the security becomes harder to maintain. Yeah, it's attractive, hey, I have all these features, but then sometimes, People really prefer, especially in routers, they, they adapt network engineers. They don't, they don't buy flashy routers. They buy feature stripped routers that does just routing. That's the only job. Doesn't have ALG or FTP handling or voice over IP. Doesn't do any of that stuff. That's the only one job and that's the only thing. That's why they prefer because they know Less features mean 
less security vulnerabilities. All right, guys, I'm going to see you in the next one. That was the Node.js February 2021 release. I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye, yo.